Good day, students. Um, on this clip, we're going to be going over the different types of discontinuity that there are. So we're going to be using this graph to uh, help you understand what, what, how to uh, classify and identify discontinuities graphically. Okay. So the instructions for the examples that we're going to be doing are as follows: find, 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 and classify. Find and classify all the points of this continuity. This continuity. Okay. And then um, also state the interval where the function state the interval where the function is continuous. Okay? Alright. Um, let's start out by talking about the discontinuity. Where are the discontinuities? So, we have a discontinuity wherever there is a break in the, gra in the graph. So, that's basically where our, our discontinuities are. So, I'm going to state what the discontinuities are where they are and the types of discontinuity. Okay, so if you take a look at the graph, you notice that um, we have a break on the graph at x equals 6. We have a discontinuity here. We also have a discontinuity at 5. And the graph continues without any interruptions until it hits negative 2. We have a discontinuity there. And it is continuous all up to the way it hits 2. So we have four discontinuities. Um, and our goal is to identify them and then classify them, all right? So you notice that the discontinuity at negative 5 and 2 are similar because you notice that you are one graph and then it jumps, right, to another graph. Um, and then this one is somewhat different. So let's add x equals, uh, we have a discontinuity at x equals negative 5 and x equals Two. Those two, the type of discontinuity we have here is known as a jump discontinuity. Jump discontinuity. Okay. It's a, uh, you just basically look at the name and it's self explanatory what a jump discontinuity is. If you have a function that goes and stops at a fixed point and then jumps to another point and continues, they have a jump discontinuity. All right. Now, at number six, you might think that there's a jump discontinuity here, but certainly not. If you look at what's going on here, the graph is going down and is approaching this value, negative six. All right? But does it ever get there? Absolutely not. This is a case where you have an asymptote, okay? An asymptote is a special kind of discontinuity. Since it never actually gets to that, that um, limiting value, that asymptote, asymptote value right there, that kind of discontinuity is known as infinite discontinuity. So at x equals at x equals negative six, we have a discontinuity, and the type is um, infinite discontinuity. Infinite discontinuity. All right. Now you're not jumping from one fixed point, one one limiting value to another. You have an asymptote there. That's why it's infinite. All right. Okay. And then last but not the least, we have one at two. At x equals 2, at x equals, I'm sorry, negative 2, this kind of discontinuity is kind of interesting, the one here, because guess what? It's a discontinuity that can actually be taken care of. What do I mean? It can actually be filled. If I move this point up right here, what just happened? The discontinuity is gone. So that kind of discontinuity is known as removable or point discontinuity. Alright? So you have a, whenever you have a point, uh, an open point on a graph like this, a break, uh, like that, the type of discontinuity that that, that is called is um, a removable, removable because you can remove it, removable or point discontinuity. All right. So just a real quick recap: jump discontinuity involves jumping in, in the graph without any asymptotes on any of the sides, any of the functions. They will have to be um, approaching a finite value. Uh, infinite discontinuity is whenever you have an asymptote, regardless of if it's the left side or the right side, the uh, um, discontinuity 
pi is known as uh, infinite. Okay? And um, removal of discontinuity is when we have a point, just a point break on the graph that can be filled by just putting a point to make the graph continuous. Alright? So there you have it, the four discontinuities and their classifications right here. Um, so, now what we're going to do next is we're going to state the intervals where uh, the function is continuous. All right, so where is the function continuous? We know it's continuous everywhere except the four values we just stated, right? So how do we write that using a set notation? All right, so intervals, we write it here, intervals of continuity. All right, so what are they? So we're going to be going from negative infinity all the way to negative 6. All right, since it never gets to negative 6, we have to put a parenthesis here. And then we're going to unite that with what continues, which is from negative 6 on the right side all the way to negative 5. Include that because that point right there is included. And then we're going to unite it from 5 to all the way to negative 2. Parenthesis, union... Uh, negative 2 all the way to 2, right there, uh, close that, well, actually I made a mistake, this is supposed to be an open circle, just a minute, this is supposed to be an open circle right here, or else it's not a function, so this, let's assume this is an open circle, okay, so union, um, so this would be a, this would be a bracket right here, this would be a bracket, and um, union, the last piece, is going to be open circle 2 to infinity. All right, so this is basically the regions where um, where the function is continuous. This is using interval, using a parenthesis notation. What if I wanted to write this using a inequality notation? That, that shouldn't be too difficult, right? So let's write that using uh, inequality notation real quick. So we're going to have... Um, x uh, greater than um, all right so for interval notation we're going to have um, we're going from negative infinity to uh, to 6 so we're going to have so we just call this interval notation I mean inequality notation all right so Inequality. Okay. So if I want to write this using inequality, I'm going to go from negative infinity to less than x, and x is um, less than negative 6, and comma, I'll have a uh, negative 6 is less than x, and x is less than or equal to negative 5, and then I'll have uh, negative 5 is less than x, x is less than negative 2, comma, negative 2 is less than, is less than x, and x is less than or equal to 2, and then last but not the least, uh, x is greater than 2, alright, so uh, this basically uh, is a, is the inequality notation for for uh, for the same result. So but this this representation up here is much more convenient and much more appropriate for high level mathematics. This is just a different way of writing. Alright? So thanks so much for uh, paying attention to this presentation. Um, please feel free to subscribe to my videos and like if you liked it. More uh, videos are available on my Have a wonderful day.